Reject. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Steffi, as uh, Ola already introduced me. Thank you for having me. Um, I will be giving the next talk, and it's about location-based Pokémon. I am going to tell you how I created a concept and developed a prototype with Node.js. Okay. So first of all, Pokémon, really? Yes, really. Um, well, I used to play Pokémon a really long time when I was younger on the Game Boy, um, and I reckon that a lot of you probably have too. Um, well, actually, yeah, this is one. Um, well, I had, the, I had a conversation with a friend um, like five years ago, and um, he told me, Steph, imagine if we could like, walk around in the world and play Pokémon in real life. You would walk around and there would be like gravel and you would find a stone Pokemon. And you would go around in the water and you would find a water Pokemon. I said, this is awesome. So, um, location-based is the answer. How would it be to um, actually play Pokemon in real life? Um, I loved the idea ever since and when a university course actually challenged us to do whatever we wanted to do, so, challenge accepted, right? So, I decided to uh, work on the concept and the development of a prototype of our idea. So, even though I expect pretty much all of you to have at least heard of Pokémon, I will uh, explain the concept to you so that nobody has to feel ashamed. Um, for those who really dig Pokémon, I'm only focusing on the red and blue versions. For, for those who really dig Pokémon and green, <laughs> so, um, Pokemon, right? Um, Pokemon is actually way more complex than I would hope for. I thought, well, Pokemon location based to a little mobile app, not that easy. Um, so, I keep it to the facts that were relevant for my work. Um, Pokemon are creatures that are pretty, pretty similar to animals which live in the fictional Pokemon world. Um, it is a role-play game, so it pretty much means that you walk around and find Pokémon or other trainers to do stuff. The goal is to um, defeat the eight gym leaders to gain medals and eventually become the Pokémon master. And of course, collect them and trade them and train them and perfection. So, those eight gym leaders I was talking about, they are spread around the Pokémon country. So, this sounds pretty much like a location-based po uh, game anyways with the exception that you only want to run around in your handheld device. Um, no? No. Um, still, as I dig deeper into the game concept, um, there were a lot of questions ap uh, appearing, so I had to narrow it down for um, my, my own expectations. I wanted to have Pokemon fights with other um, passengers, uh, other people who I met on the way, but it wasn't that easy. So uh, my self-set goal uh, was to add new possibilities to a game concept which already existed. So I didn't want to change it that much. First, I went on creating a paper-based prototype. Here you can see um, three of the screens I sketched and created the wireframes. So how does this game work and everything? And this is also where you can see why I didn't become an artist. Um, no. So, um, first, it's pretty easy to adapt it, but um, you also have to do a bit of um, modifications to the original gameplay. Because the um, target group of the Pokémon games are mainly underage children, I, for example, um, invented, uh, invented. Um, I created um, a mode which I called ready and seek mode. So um, in the ready mode, for example, you can walk around and everybody else who is in ready mode too sees you. So save for children, so, or maybe not that much. But, um, you can only see others who are in your area. If you are really keen on fighting now, you can go into seek mode and you see every other people who every other person who is in seek mode as well so even if there are people further across then you can have your fight right now even though they are further away 
Um, so that's just for the um, concept of Pokemon. For the development, um, I wanted to create a mobile game with map features because it was more easy for me to create it in the mobile environment because I didn't have to care about libraries and everything else and uh, Apple or everything. So um, I just created a mobile game with Node.js. Uh, so for the location-based features, I needed, of course, a map. Well, the map, I uh, integrated it with Leaflet, which is a really nice library which um, already implements user location and is really easily uh, customizable and uh, you can have really pretty pop-ups and everything, so it looks nice already. Also a big plus is the data is provided by OpenStreetMap. So um, the data is um, um, the data comes from really different people, and it's open, right? Also, uh, it's pretty easy to include um, storm and watercolor map types. I will tell you about this afterwards. So, map integration. This is how it how it ships. So this is pretty um, beautiful already. But I wanted something like this. This is how the Pokemon looks nowadays. It's with color. It's weird, I know, but this is how it would look like. So I wanted to look pretty, so I included the Starman uh, map tiles. This is how this looks, and it was actually pretty easy to include it. Um, this is how it looks. So um, you pretty much just, I just need um, the um, location, which is already given by Leaflet, the library. It already gets the location from the browser, uh, whatever browser you are in. I think it supports pretty much everyone. And uh, also, it doesn't matter which device you use. Um, so now I had a really pretty map displayed in the browsers on both desktop and mobile, but how to connect it to the actual Pokemon gameplay. First um, thing was, how do I retrieve what terrain I'm working on, walking on. Well, I have my location, right? But how do I find out that I'm running around on a street, running around on grass and everything? So that's pretty straightforward. You probably know this. You create a rectangle for the position. This is some basic code, how I did it. And um, with that rectangle, I get open street map, map features. And those are, um, but to understand how to get information from OpenStreetMap, I came across the map features. Uh, features describe how a certain point is tagged um, with all sorts of local features. For example, they include transportation, um, which could be a street, a railway, uh, or even an aerial way. They even have, uh, they have all sorts of tags. Buildings, country borders, and all those can be found amongst these features. I wanted the natural features, so for a start, uh, water, woods, or rocky areas, whatever Pokemon could live on. Um, so OpenStreetMap uh, offers several uh, open API, APIs, um, which make their data available for different kinds of usage. For my case, the Overpass app API did just enough. It is a read-only API to search for map data by location, or tag properties. Um, to look for any kind of tag, you need to create you need to create the API call first. That was pretty much the harder thing <laughs> of the whole app. So, um, yeah, you get the map data by location. This is the call for the overpass API, and it searches for searches for all tags according to natural features. What you get of it, out of it is like a 8,000 uh, lines long uh, file which includes lines like this. Here you can see um, it, for example, includes highway information, there's a bicycle way, and uh, traffic signals, and this is just a random excerpt of a whole file. So now I had to process this. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> um, well, the challenges of this node natural features, which you saw already, um, this was nothing, this had not, nothing to do with natural features, right? 
it had only to do with um, traffic features. So why would a Pokemon care where a traffic light is, for example? Um, so it also shows that there, is, um, there are a lot of possibilities and I have to deal with all of those to make it not that frustrating for players if they walk around and if they are in the city, they still want to meet Pokemon. I mean, you want to play Pokemon in Berlin as well, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I got around this too, and uh, it was really hard testing it because uh, when I was testing it, I was in Berlin, and there was, a, there was not so much nature. And uh, in the beginning, I didn't know that it was due to that. I just thought I didn't know how to get the nature t t uh, feature. So that was kind of weird in the beginning. But then I finally managed how to do this. So then, how get the Pokemon into my map? Well, there's a great Pokemon API, and I really have to... <laughs> well, seriously, Paul, if I may call you Paul, you pretty much saved my life, providing this API, and it also made me cry a bit over the awesomeness of the webs. And I totally fan, fangirl fainted when you favored my tweet on the, when I tweeted about your API. It was really nice. Um, it provides all the information I needed so far. It provides all the information about types, uh, when do Pokemon evolve. Po information about Pokemon is, seems so much straightforward, but you can't believe how much tables there are. Uh, which types are better than those types, and some are normal and everything. It's so much more complex than I would have guessed. So, how did I map the Pokémon to uh, my actual map? Well, I did it pretty easy. I just do a random on the 151 first Pokémon and um, get this Pokémon and check if it suits the natural features I am walking on right now. And if that gives me a match, then I will be meeting a Pokemon on this particular spot. So, really straightforward, pretty easy. Um, so, this is uh, where I got the Pokemon types. Um, I have the um, natural, where, where um, the main natural feature I, am, I have retrieved so far. And compared with the Pokemon types with the Poke of the Pokemon I just found in the database or in the RP of Paul. And uh, so far, this is only for tree, sand, and water. These are the tags which are used by um, OpenStreetMap. And then I say that these, um, this, these are the features um, a Pokemon could suit to. So, wow, I'm fast. It's already demo time. <laughs> So, you saw before that I am not a good designer, which pretty much goes further here. So, I will register, register a new account. Just call my Steffi. I hope I don't exist yet. It's really easy. Nice. So, now I can choose a Pokemon. By the way, the Pokemon font is really actually done for Pokemon. Um, so many good things out there in the internet, the sprites as well. So there's a database for everything, yes. So which one, which Pokemon are we going to choose? Which one? Charmander, I heard Charmander. <laughs> yes. So now I have Charmander in my Pokemon, uh, in my Pokedex. Um, I can now go to the map. Ah, now it has to locate me first. Here we are in the radial system. Oh wow, we found a Tangler. This is the beautiful pop-up by um, Leaflet. Yeah, it's pretty easy, but luckily the Game Boy doesn't look much different. Um, now I can fight it. What do we want to use, blaze or solar power? <laughs> blaze. Yes, it hit, it hit. Yeah, the thing is, the, I don't, don't even have a real fighting organism. It's really basic, it's just a proof of concept. But I can fight it, and I also have a hack. I can just catch it, and it always works. 
<laughs> so, yeah, okay, but go back here. So, yeah, I'm really fast. Um, my conclusion, as I said before, way too many times, Pokemon is so complex. I was considering to actually implement the implement fights with other people. That would be so awesome to walk around and then if somebody wants to challenge me, some pop-up shows up and then, oh, somebody wants to fight me. Um, it would be so awesome. I still, um, and a big problem of this is I can be sued. I don't know if Nintendo already is like claiming their, <laughs> their rights, so that wouldn't be too awesome, but I still want this. So I'm, if there's any lawyer in between you who can tell me how these things work, because I really don't have any clue, that would be seriously awesome. I don't mean this as a, as a joke, it would be really awesome, because I think there are a few of interested people of you in actually contributing this to this. I only open sourced it today, so because today I felt pretty good that I might not get sued that quick. So um, maybe you just contribute and we go to in jail together. So yeah. Um, and there's also even I, I talked to a lot of people and a lot of people were also so stoked about this idea. And um, actually, I don't know if you remember it, in April, um, Google launched some kind of uh, location-based game as well. And they did a trailer with augmented reality Pokemon. So they were like standing on the traffic lights and there was a huge onyx coming out down. So that was pretty awesome. And um, the reactions show that people would actually play this. And this was really basic. You could just click on Pokemon, pretty much like my game, where you would always get it. Um, it does show, though, though that it has to be done. We have to have this. It's so easy, not for me, but I mean for us. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, that was already it, actually. But I hope you still enjoyed the talk, even though it was quite short. Um, if you want to uh, fork, uh, Pokemon is the um, repository. And um, oh, one more thing. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> Reject.